When Harper Lee's novel To Kill a Mockingbird was first published in 1960, no one involved, least of all Harper Lee, had any thought that the book would turn into the worldwide phenomenon it has become. Lee herself hoped that the novel might sell 3,000 copies. The total number of copies sold as of 2018, 58 years after publication? More than 40 million. Autobiographical in nature, To Kill a Mockingbird's central character of the tomboyish young girl Scout was very similar to Harper Lee herself. Scout's father, attorney Atticus Finch, to Lee's own father, attorney A.C. Lee, and next-door neighbor Dill, to Lee's own next-door neighbor, Truman Capote. Having moved to New York from her hometown of Monroeville, Alabama, Lee labored on the novel for three years. Submitting a manuscript entitled Go Set a Watchman in February 1957, Harper Lee was told by her editor, Tay Hohoff, to concentrate on the material featuring Scout's memory of her childhood in Depression-era Makeham, Alabama, a fictionalized version of Lee's own hometown. Under Hohoff's supervision, Lee wrote three different drafts of the novel until the heavily reworked material saw the light of day in 1960 as To Kill a Mockingbird. Greeted with great critical acclaim, the novel quickly became a national bestseller and garnered the first-time author a Pulitzer Prize. Harper Lee, it turned out, had written the right book at the right time in the right place. In the United States of 1960, change was literally in the air. John F. Kennedy was running for president, birth control pills had just been introduced, Foreign films with their greater permissiveness were finding widespread distribution, and Elvis Presley was changing the face of popular music. Towering above all was the burgeoning civil rights movement, one which seemed centered upon Harper Lee's own native state of Alabama. While Governor George Wallace thundered segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever, Freedom writers traveled to the South in order to challenge racial segregation. And future Nobel Peace Prize winner Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. led nonviolent protests which garnered nationwide publicity while galvanizing citizens across America into a greater understanding of the racism which pervaded American society as the legacy of the country's original sin, the institution of slavery. Harper Lee was explaining America to its own citizens. In the figure of Atticus Finch, she created the man Americans wanted to be, an idealized father figure who reflected the very best version of each American, a champion of the underdog, a comforting father figure as avatar of tolerance and justice. She had crafted a novel as a bridge to our own childhood innocence one which granted world-weary adults a sense of hope. Hollywood came calling, and in 1962, a film version starring Gregory Peck as Atticus Finch was released to wide acclaim and three Academy Awards, including one for Peck as Best Actor. Other names, like Spencer Tracy, had been mentioned to play the role of Atticus Finch, but in Gregory Peck, the filmmakers had found the ideal interpreter of an American icon said Alan Pakula, the producer of the film. I must say, the man and the character were not unalike. Said Peck of landing the role, God was smiling on me. In a 21st century poll of the American Film Institute, Mockingbird was voted the second greatest American movie of all time after Frank Capra's It's a Wonderful Life, and Atticus Finch was voted the greatest movie hero of all time. In a very similar fashion, in a United Kingdom World Book Day poll, Mockingbird, which continues to sell 750,000 copies every year, six decades after publication, was voted the one book every adult should read. The second place finisher? The Bible. It is no wonder, then, that in a farewell speech made as he was leaving the office of the presidency, President Barack Obama stated, if our democracy is to work in this increasingly diverse nation, 
Each one of us must try to heed the advice of one of the great characters in American fiction, Atticus Finch. Quote, You never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view, until you climb into his skin and walk around in it. Beloved, full of honest sentiment but never sentimental, clear-eyed and never shying away from the reality of everyone's fraught journey from childhood through to adolescence and adulthood, To Kill a Mockingbird seems the very embodiment of the words spoken by actor Brock Peters in the eulogy he delivered for his great friend Gregory Peck. In art there is compassion. In compassion there is humanity. With humanity there is generosity and love. This is Tom Santopietro, the author of Why to Kill a Mockingbird Matters. Thank you.